Hello again, I am Blunty. This is Josh from Asus. Sorry, Asus? Asus. 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 <laughs> Asus is apparently the official proper way to pronounce it, unlike me, who's been spending the last decade and a half saying Asus. It's okay, Blunty. There is hope. Do the big wigs even care if I say it wrong? It's all right, mate. I, I will defend you. I will get in there. I'll right. be like, it's all good. So we're here with Asus. <laughs> I'm at the uh, AMD launch event where they're telling us all about their flashy new video cards and, of course, Asus being one of their partners. <laughs> I've decided to have a talk to Josh here about what they've got coming out. So where do you start? What have you got for us? Okay, so we'll, we'll uh, obviously have a, a full product stack. So all the way from the R7 360 at the bottom all the way up to the Fury X. So uh, what, I, what we've actually brought with us today is the R9 380 because we do believe that that's going to be hit, hitting a really nice price point for, for the gamers and that the gamers can get in there and just enjoy that gaming experience that they're really looking for. Before we go any further, what is that price point? Okay, so the price point is still TBC by our uh, product manager, but I am informed, reliably informed, it's going to be a hot price point, okay? How hot? Again, I have to wait for the product manager, my friend. I'm not the price setter, unfortunately. See, well, you, you can't come on camera and say we're aiming for a really hot <laughs> price point and then not have a price point to tell us. Oh! You have idea how frustrating that is. I understand that, my friend. I do understand, but I hope that, uh, you know, by the time people are really thinking, okay, what, what, what 380s are out there or you know even 390s or Furies that th there is um, going to be qu quite a broad number of boards available and they can make that choice then. All right. What we do know already is, and I can say this because I've been looking, like right now looking for the graphics that I'm going to be using in my new build, is Aces are competitively priced and they do have a competitive advantage when it comes to their Strix cooler technology they do. stuff. They do. Tell me about that. Okay, so basically the Strix zero dB fan technology. Now zero dB for the non-nerdy sound geeks out there means no noise, none, quiet, love it. So basically, what that means is that uh, whenever the card is below 65 degrees Celsius, it will shut down the fans completely. And basically, what what that means is you can play games, you know, MOBAs such as Dota 2 and also League of Legends, which we all know have huge player bases and really don't require a huge graphical output, these cards will run with the fans turned off. So that is a really schmick thing to be able to be completely immersed in, in that game and not be concerned about having these whirring fans, yeah. right? Because that's a real pain in the ass, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I come from old school BC. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the last rig I built was almost a decade ago or so. And in those days, quiet PCs were a thing of imagination. Yeah. So it was a dream we all had, and we hoped water cooling would come along and save us all, but right. of course water cooling still needs fans to cool the thing. And so that but, doesn't work yeah. out, right? Yeah. But now we've had, you know, 10 years of enthusiast hardcore PC gamers screaming for stuff, and now we've got serious chunky heat sinks. Yeah that can solve the problem without the fans running out for most of the time. Correct, and so we're actually able to achieve that solution using the direct uh, uh, CU2 solution uh, of our, our, our graphics card. So we've got an update of that coming through in terms of direct CU3, and that's going to be in place on the, the 390X. Uh, so 390X is certainly something to keep your eyes uh, you know, peeled for. It's going to be quite a sexy looking card. If you're well. an enthusiast gamer, someone who games in 1440p, yeah. even up to 4K, yeah. that, the, the, that's where you want to be, really. Correct, isn't it? correct. Because then you've got things like the 8, uh, eight gig VRAM, so that's certainly really important when you're dealing with high, high resolution, really massive textures, you're going to fill up VRAM pretty quickly. So to have 8 gig available is significant. And again, for the, for the non nerdy types, and I do have the non nerdy types watching me, yes. believe it or not, some nerds out there who know what you're talking about, but the more VRAM you have, the more space you have for storing textures, graphics textures, the, the, the JPEGs and stuff that get wrapped yeah, around yeah, the 3D yeah. things frames. that would make our beards. Yeah. And everybody loves beards, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure how well I've got the focus because I've had a few beers. I think you're beating me on the beard front, though. I'm only about no, two I'm, weeks I'm, in. I'm just talking about focus. Oh. I don't know. If it's out of focus, guys, I do apologize. I've been taking full advantage of the open bar. It has been available. You're drinking Heineken, really? Yeah. You can still love me. It's okay, Blunty. It's okay. All right. Now, a couple of minutes ago, you were telling me about the advantage of using Asus or Asus. 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 Asus boards, graphics cards, with your motherboards. You've got a special yeah. trick you can do if you use the two in combination. Correct. So we've actually developed it so that the uh, when you throw an 
an ASUS graphics card into an, an, an ASUS uh, motherboard, you can actually control the fans on the graphics cards through the motherboard. Now that's a pretty neat trick because using that along with another feature on, on the uh, uh, motherboards called QFAN, you can start to control all the fans in your whole system and create this quiet gaming solution. Especially if you're an enthusiast gamer, your world is all about gaming. Hell yeah. You don't want that in the background to, you know, you're not going to sacrifice the comfort of your playing environment for the sake of noise versus graphical fidelity. So, exactly, yeah. dude. Like, I think back to when I was growing up gaming. Now, this is the early 2000s. I'm not that old, guys. Um, so, the early 2000s, you know, I grew up playing on online uh, gaming, especially uh, Day of Defeat. Day of Defeat, for me, the Half-Life 1 mod was You grew great up playing fun. online gaming luxury yeah. when I were a lad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I was lucky. I was one of the first in, in my area to have a proper broadband connection. So, I had a broadband connection in, in 2000. So I was then gaming, you know, five, six, seven hours a day. My parents hated that. <laughs> and check it out, I'm now working for ASUS. Take Worked that, right? mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to be able to play games and enjoy them and not be ripped out of that immersive environment, that is really important. And so that's something where when these features started to roll through of this fan control and being able to set... Uh, particular RPM limits and you know either hit hit a button and say okay motherboard do it yourself or take direct control and set direct limits as to okay I want this fan hitting 800 uh, RPM this other fan that's cooling my cluster of hard drives they've been getting a bit hot lately so I'm actually going to set that one to 1600 you can do that so that decision is totally up to the, to the person driving that particular motherboard. And that's all at BIOS level. BIOS level, man. That's brilliant. So I'm going to put you on the spot now. As I've been talking to you before, and these guys already know, yep. I'm just about, I'm on the verge, I'm on the cusp of building my own yes. gaming PC rig for the first time in about 10 years. Things have changed, but Getting not that much. Getting back into the master race. It's actually easy to build your own PC now than it, it was back in the day, believe it or not. Mm. I'm going to ask you right now, my budget is about 1500, 1600-ish. Mm -hmm. If I was gonna get an Asus, 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 motherboard and graphics card combo so I could take advantage of that mm. nifty little, you know, team, yeah. team up work thingy. Is that the, I think that's the metaphor I wanna go with. Team up work thingy, yeah. I can team work, up work with thingy. that. Let's do that. I'm not a super hardcore PC gamer, mm -hmm. but I do want things to look sweet. I wanna hit those ultra settings. What would I get motherboard uh, GPU wise? Okay, so we're obviously at an, an AMD event. So there are, are AMD options out there. But in terms of hitting price points, I actually tend to look at, at Intel um, because what they're able to provide and, and how, how much further you're able to push the uh, CPU actually says quite a bit because once you get that extra uh, CPU performance, that can also translate into extra GPU performance. And I am leaning towards the, the top end of the i5, yep. the K model, so I can overclock. Yes. Yeah, so if I need to squeeze out just a bit more like from a, it. a 4690K, you know, grab, grab one of those, th those bad boys, throw it into a, a motherboard such as, say, maybe an... an uh, ROG uh, Maximus 7 Ranger, or perhaps even a, a, Z, a Z97 Pro Gamer. Um, these, these boards from, from ASUS have very uh, capable overclocking um, uh, abilities. And simply going through, grabbing, you know, th those boards sitting around the uh, 230, 240 price point. So grab one of those. Core i5 as well, because you see one, one of the issues as well when you're dealing with with uh, hyperthreading. There are some games that tend to stumble a little bit when it comes to hyperthreading. So the Core i7, you've really got to be mindful of what games you're uh, wanting to play. So Core i5 is a good choice in that respect, and uh, and also hits the uh, price point as well. So you grab those, and then in terms of uh, graphics cards, it really depends on what what resolution and also what titles you're uh, playing. Whether you're playing, you know. This this uh, Christmas coming, the, all those triple uh, triple A titles, or whether you prefer to be a couple of generations behind, because there are people out there that say, okay, look, I could be paying the the here and now premium, or I could actually just keep playing games from a year ago and wait until the current ones age. That is quite a common thing for gamers to do. So, you know, I'm. I'm aware of, of that, and so when anyone ever asks a question like this, I always try to drill down a little further and get a bit more information. Right, so let's say I'm looking at newer games, mm -hmm. like you know, Witcher 3, I don't have any personal interest in that, but that type of game, mm. uh, the new Batman game, you know, the new AAA titles, yep. I know I can take care of all the rest pretty much no matter what graphics card I choose, yeah. but I want to get you know, high to ultra 
levels of, of fidelity out of it mm -hmm. on my PC at sort of 1080p, 1440p version. I don't see much benefit going to 4K yep. right at the moment. But if I wanted to play with 4K, mm. so I got a 4K monitor into review or something, I'd yes. like to be able to know I could, you know, nudge it, nudge it, and, yeah. and you know, tap it on the shoulder and go, "Hey, what's up?" In that respect, I reckon a 290 uh, or or or, two, or 290x is, is nice. And then what 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 you can look at is the fact that well, actually, the 390x and and 390 grabs a lot of that performance and brings to to it a lot of. Uh, uh, up-to-date uh, technology features. So we are talking earlier about the auto extreme uh, uh, technology. So with... Ignore the, the stupid 90s marketing term. Auto extreme. auto extreme! And listen to what actually does. Okay, so auto extreme, what does it actually do? It's all about surface mount technology. So um, it's basically automating the uh, the process of putting the surface componentry such as uh, capacitors, chokes, you know, basically the uh, uh, VRM architecture, putting that onto the, the, the PCB itself. You would, in the past, have the legs coming out of a cap, it goes through the PCB, gets a bit of solder on both, uh, on, on, on both ends, you know, Bob's your uncle. But now um, what, 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 what we're doing is actually surface mounting the uh, uh, components so there are direct contact points on, on, on the surface without pins coming through. And so I'd shown the demo so I'll grab this card here. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> uh, this is the last little bit of PCB sort of showing because we've uh, got a back plate on this particular card, but you can see the PCB is actually smooth. And that's smooth because there's no componentry coming through. So you get an, an aesthetic and practical solution on that um, front, so on, on the physical front. But in terms of what does it do for you guys at home? Why, why is this important for you guys? Well, basically it means that uh, by withdrawing the uh, potential for, for human error, we actually have a scenario whereby we, we, we can say, okay, all of the components were put on by machine, accurately put on by machine, and then scanned and checked by, by machine. Everything's sweet. So from there, the, we, we, we can say that the uh, uh, DOA rates, the dead on arrival, for those of you not in the uh, lingo, is actually going to be significantly lower. Now, for a vendor such as, as ASUS that already has quite a low DOA rate, this is even better still because it means that for you guys at home, you can grab a card, take it home, plug it into your system, and know that it's going to work for you. And that's really important, right? So you want to get gaming straight away. So basically what you're telling me is these are built by robots to be awesome. Robots in disguise. I have to say it, guys. If you didn't notice, he's wearing Transformers. <laughs> we had to squeeze it in there somehow. Somehow. It was awkward, but I think we made it work. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Along with those thingy-mabobs we were talking about before, right? We, we just make up jargon. That's what we wanted to talk about, right? The, the thingy-mabobs. <laughs> the thingy-mabobs. Highly technical term. Mm -mm. This interview is falling apart. We should end it now. <laughs> but it's been an absolute pleasure. And Thanks I need a fresh beer as well. So thank you, guys. This is uh, Josh, James. Josh. Ro Josh. Yep. Told you I forget your name. All good, man. All good. I remember good. it from here on. Josh from, from Asus or Asus. Asus. Say it once for me, proper way. Asus. Asus. You got it now, with, guys. With a Z. Well, Asus. Think of it like A Y E dash Z E U S. Asus. No. 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 Doesn't work for you. No. All right. Enjoy. <laughs> I think that went well. <laughs> That was a bit of fun, wasn't it? That was fun. Yeah, yeah.